What's going on guys? Tells86 here with Weekly Review and today we're going to be doing a first impression of F-Zero on the Wii U which was just released today. So we're going to be playing this on the pad and just going to basically share my opinion about the F-Zero series. Now for anyone who's never touched the F-Zero franchise at all, you guys don't know what you're missing. This is a really great game series. It's very high octane. It's really super fast. It requires a lot of concentration, but it's a really great game. So, we're going to go ahead and start the game. So let's go ahead and start up F-Zero. And the thing is, is I was never a person that went ahead and got into F-Zero around the time when the Super Nintendo was first coming out. I didn't know anything about F-Zero. You can laugh at me if you want, but I didn't know anything about F-Zero until just a lot later on. And, I mean, I feel kind of bad uh, not knowing anything about F-Zero, which is, it's, I mean, I'll, I'll admit to you guys, F-Zero is a really high obtainable game, and for a lot of reasons, because the game is not a pushover game. This is a racing game that you have to fight for your life, and it also can be a very tough game. It doesn't require a lot of strategy. Uh, and that's one thing I do like about this racing game. You can basically just beat the crap out of your opponents when you're running into them. And you're going at really high, fast speeds and everything, which also makes it really cool. The graphics, I can tell, uh, were a pretty good amount for their time on the Super Nintendo. Um, again, like I said, I wasn't a person that went and got into F-Zero at the time. Uh, I didn't know anything about F-Zero until... F-Zero GP Legend, which I got on the Game Boy Advance, and, I mean, I'm just getting hammered over here, and you guys can laugh all you want, I don't mind, but one of the things that I really like about with F-Zero series is that the game is just very, very, again, very high octane. It has a lot of uh, replay value, too, because, I mean, you can go through each of these levels and try to bash the crap out of your opponents and you can try to take out your rivals, watch your car explode, which is pretty awesome. Now, I mean, I can tell a reason why this game wasn't, like, an extremely hot seller around the time, because it was released around in 91, around the same time that Super Mario World was also coming out, and a lot of other games as well. So I can see, in a portion, why Nintendo was probably a little upset and why this game didn't sell as much. But then again, around that time, I mean, think about it, there were a lot of Super Nintendo games coming out. I mean, we had Super Mario World, we had uh, F-Zero coming out around 1990 in Japan. I think it was 1990 in Japan, if I'm wrong, though. Please feel free to correct me on that. But I mean, this is just, again, it's a very high-octane-based game. It requires a lot of concentration. And you have to have at least a little bit of skill to play this. And again, I'm going to be... I'm going to be taken out, I just know it. And we're actually racing on a Deathwind 2, and this is actually a very, very, very hard track, and BAM! I just got destroyed. Man. That's okay, though. One of the cool things, at least, that I also like about this game is the sense of, uh, just accomplishment that you can get from this game. It is... Again, I keep saying it's a very high-octane based game, because it is. It's a very tough game, because it requires you to have a lot of concentration to where your car is moving, and, I mean, you also gotta make sure that you have as much power as possible, because if you lose that power, it makes you more vulnerable, and that's just a couple things that I would like to see possibly keep in the F-Zero franchise. So, let's go ahead and do another one, but we're going to be racing in a different car. Let's go ahead and choose... Let's choose the Golden Fox. And we're going to go ahead and do a, a Queen League. For beginner. Because that's the only one we have. But we have Mute City 2. Now this will be a good one. Now plus the music in this game is really, really good. I mean, for the Super Nintendo time that it came out, I mean, it's really high, fast-paced, it's super fun, 
Though again, like I said, you have to make sure that you watch everything that's going on on screen. Make sure that you're not running into any kind of gravel or anything which will make your car go and lose speed. Now you do have a drift you can use with the R button. Like you can see I just drifted there for like a couple seconds. Make sure that you run over as soon as you're passing through a lap. Uh, make sure that you go over to the little power generator and make sure that you regenerate your power because you're going to need that when you get into the higher levels. Because the game, like I said, it will get very, very high pay, quick paced. And, I mean, I've played, again, like I have played only a few of the games in the F-Zero franchise. I've played F-Zero GX on the GameCube. I have played F-Zero GP Legend. And I also do have, uh, of course, anybody that has the Ambassador program for their Nintendo 3DS. I do have F-Zero Maximum Velocity. Which, I really hope, if anything, Nintendo goes ahead and releases more of these uh, F-Zero style based games, because, I mean, I haven't seen an F-Zero game since GX, and I mean, I would love to see another F-Zero game. And I think, in a way, that's what everybody is hoping that Retro Studios is going to be creating uh, when they release uh, any kind of info about E3 this year. I'm hoping that we're going to have a lot of really cool goodies to hear about. I mean, if it's not even F-Zero that we're going to hear about, I would still like to hear Star Fox. Because, I mean, come on. We need at least either a new Star Fox game, or we need a new F-Zero game. At least one of those two. But, man, I'm just getting hammered. And, let's go ahead and try to see if we can make it. Alright, final lap. Move out of my way. Out of my way. Out of my way. Hey! Now, one of the things I also want to do say about with this game is, as you go through the stages, each stage will be actually a lot smaller than the previous stage, making it so that when you're having to fight for first place, you're going to have to bang, like, against, like, not only just players, but you'll be banging against the sides of the street rail, like I just did right there. And this ain't going to be cool. I've got to get up there. Oh, I got third place. That's better than nothing. But still, this is just my first impression of uh, F Zero on the Wii U. It plays really good. Uh, I kind of would like, if possible, if uh, they could possibly have it so you could upscale it anyway. I mean, again, I don't think that that's any way possible for them to do that, since it is an older game. But definitely a very fun game, especially if you're getting it for thirty cents. So, if you guys want a really fun game for 30 cents to go ahead and buy, definitely pick this up. Again, I'm not really reviewing this, I'm just giving my first impression of it. But, if you guys do want a really fun game, and if you have never played F-Zero ever, I really do recommend that you guys do get this game. Especially because it's a very cult classic based game, and nice! I'm just not paying attention at all. That was epic fail. Pure epic fail. I am not worthy of being a Nintendo gamer for that. <laughs> anyway, guys, this is again my first impression of F-Zero from the Super Nintendo playing on the Wii U. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And until then, this has been Tales 86 with With Your View, saying take care. Later. Epic fail!